a quick update on the stylish LED lamps I, from China. I have uh, taken the little one, completely to bits, I've taken the circuit board out of it, and the circuit board inside is a bit thinner than the others. It's exactly the same circuitry, but it's thinner. And to get the components squeezed on, they've pretty much sat them up directly next to the bridge rect far in the middle, but all the component values are the same. And I've also drawn the schematic out here. So, as with so many of these lamps, it's just a simple capacitive dropper. They've got a zero ohm link, which would normally be used to uh, limit inrush current, but they've chosen just to put zero ohms there. Maybe they've had problems with the resistors blowing at the input, not sure. Or they were just saving pennies by saying, we don't really need it, we're not going to include it. It's got a 820 nanofarad capacitor, which is quite high value, and an 820k resistor, discharge resistor across it. An MB6S bridge rect far, um, a 4.7 meg far 400 volt capacitor on the output with a 330k discharge resistor, and then the 200 ohm resistor, quite a beefy 200 ohm resistor in surface mount terms, um, between the output and the LEDs. And the value of that resistor will determine how much flicker there is because it will uh, limit the sort of um, the current that flows through the LEDs and the discharge rate of the electrolytic between its being topped up in each half of the mains waveform. But I suppose 200 ohm is a, just a good round figure given that these are probably running in the region of 50 milliamps, I'd guess. Um, and just out of interest, I... Now, is that 50 milliamps? I think it's round about that. I suppose there's one way to find out exactly how much current's flowing through these. And that's to do dangerous things with the meter again. Let's do dangerous things with the meter. So here's a power supply, and I'll shall, uh, put this into an adapter. And I'll put this circuit board down like that. And then I shall probe. I'll just short one of the LEDs out with um, a meter set current. So I'm going to turn that on, then it's going to dazzle me. Oh yes, it's dazzling. So how much current is flowing through the LED circuit? Here's the meter, I'll put it to the 300 milliamp range. DC. I'll bring that a wee bit closer into the field of shot here. Don't know if the lamp's going to swamp that out. And then I'll just bridge one of these LEDs. When I see the LED go out, I'll know I've got a good connection. The LED has gone out. 46 milliamps. I was pretty close at 50. Okay. Righty-o. I shall uh, remove that from there. Now, I did a slight modification. I got a... Uh, this was drawing about 3 watts of power initially. And I changed the capacitor in it. Um, this circuit board, I just swapped this red capacitor over and I swapped it for the largest I had in stock, which is unfortunately just 220 nanofarad because I tend to use them for just low level lighting -y type projects. Uh, I wish I'd actually known that uh, I was going to do this, I would have ordered some up of the 470 and maybe even 680 nanofarad, but I put a 220 nanofarad one in. And here's a power meter. So, what sort of power? Jingit's going to draw now that I've changed it from 820 nanofarad down to 220 nanofarad. Theoretically, that's round about a quarter ish. So um, it's going to be one watt ish. 0.5 watt. Now, is it actually 0.5 watt? It's certainly not super bright now. It'd be alright as a night light, but it's. Yeah, I've gone too far. I should have either put in a 470 nanofarad. Oh, yeah, technically speaking, 470 nanofarad would take it probably up to 1 watt. So that 820, oh yeah, that's, it seems to go up in a non-linear fashion. Well, that's quite odd. Or even a 680 nanofarad, but that's, that's interesting enough. It was quite amusing doing it. Um, but yeah, I do, I do like these lights. I'm going to actually order a few more because I really do like them. Oh, here's another thing. I did the tooth test on the plastics. Um, if you tap things in your teeth, you can actually feel the texture and uh, rigidity and hardness. So you can tell the difference between glass and plastic. And this stuff here is gritty. It actually feels like it's loaded with some sort of um, 
maybe a thermally conductive pigment, so this might actually be thermally conductive plastic. But it's a shame then that they didn't put a paste to couple between the aluminium onto that plastic. Not 100% sure. But um, I might actually just soak test one of these lamps and see how well it lasts, see what sort of temperature it gets up to. But yeah, nice lights nonetheless and eminently hackable.